You are listening to the Talking Music Podcast with Josh Ferguson and Connor Bryant. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Well, don't... <laughs> no, actually, no. Fuck it. That's, that's the intro. Hi, my name's Josh Ferguson. This is the Talking Music Podcast. I'm joined with Connor Bryant. How are you today? I'm, I'm doing good. I'm doing very good. I'm actually really excited to talk about these, to be honest. Yeah, I've been, I've been excited for like two weeks. Like we've been, we've been yeah, we've been planning this for two weeks now. We've been pretty much like cock teasing each other about these two albums for fucking ages now. Like proper cock teasing. Yeah, yeah. yeah so literal cock teasing. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, <laughs> I mean, that's that's the vibe I got. But... Yeah, no, it's true. Hey it's ho. true. Uh, yeah, basically, uh, in this episode, we're going to be talking about nostalgic albums. Uh, albums that formed our teenage years, our childhood years, and that really formed us as people and music listeners now. Uh, so our albums are very different. I think that's fair to say. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, very, very different. So my nostalgic album is The Nationals' High Violet, uh, which came out in 2010, and your nostalgic album is uh, Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness by Smashing Pumpkins. Smashing Pumpkins, Melancholy, Infants. So if you're familiar with those two albums, you'll know one is like a 15-minute indie rock album, and then the other is a two-hour grunge album. <laughs> hey, so, hey, hey, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interject straight away there. And, okay, and I, I know what you're going to say. But I, it, it is not grunge. It is absolutely not grunge. I know. Well, I'm going to talk about that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I went into it thinking it's a two-hour grunge album. Yeah. Um, so yeah, basically, that's the premise of this episode. Uh, we're going to take each other's nostalgic albums, listen to them, and react to them. So I'm reacting to your nostalgic album, mm-hmm. and you're reacting to my nostalgic album. Mm-hmm. And keep in mind, we have no nostalgic relationship to each of our albums. No. right? So we're just listening to them as normal people, right? just as if there's any other album. So we can either break the other person's heart or we can form long lasting relationships <laughs> through our opinions. <laughs> we'll guess yeah. we'll have to wait and see to what we think. So yeah, I listen to Melancholy and the Infinite Sanders. You listened you listen to High Violet. Well, I, I, I listen to a fair amount of national, actually. Like because mm. uh, I to mean balance like, out the, uh, the Yeah, hours, just to balance like, out the run times because well there's there's been this thing with me and you for like what like it's got to be like a year and a half now since you first introduced the national yeah to me. since sleep well beast came out and uh which which was what like a year ago like a couple of weeks now i think it's like, like a, a year bang on now it's like last yeah September. yeah yeah it's, it's yeah. very because they recently reissued it or whatever um mm. but yeah and and i've dogged on them for so long i i, I was unfairly I was them. so unfairly so because unfairly i I, so. I actually didn't listen to them and i uh apart from sleep yeah. well beast which i i said put me to sleep um mm. you <laughs> listen to it at like midnight or one uh, about 1 a.m w- 1 a.m uh one one september evening mm-hmm. and, and you listen to it once and then i said no you need to listen to it again because you can't listen to it at that time of night fall asleep but... and then say yeah that's my listen and it and it but it just it just bored me so much that like I was I was like no I I just can't and 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 I'd listened to a few tracks here and there that I think you'd played in our living room before and and yeah. I was just like this, this is just it's so bland to me and it's so boring that I literally every time you'd be like listen to Alligator or like listen to High Violet it's really good I'd be like I have like no fucking motivation to and what was it it was about two weeks ago now like you 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 said to me like oh you you need to listen to these and i said like i tell you what like listen to this album and i'll listen to alligator and i'll listen to high violet and that's pretty yeah. much how this whole thing started um but yeah like uh so so yeah that's that's my relationship with the national and how i've mm. trashed all over them i mean i think that's a good introduction to your review of high violet don't you think okay so uh yeah so <laughs> I I I, I did I, I kinda ate my own hat on this one because well I started off with Alligator and mm-hmm. I I adore it. I, I think Alligator is Oh you adore it now. I, I think it's fucking fantastic. Like I think oh, every hey, okay. I think every single track is is amazing on it. I, I I I've said this to you before, but like I, I love like the sugariness of it. I love like the sort of uh 
the sort of almost math rocky guitars in it like they're very very uh, plucky and just really really nice to listen to it's really really soft but then there's like energetic places like i, I think it's um uh mr november like especially like there's there's oh, like some good. punky vocals in there but then there's also like the sort of like monotonous poetry type vocals that you that after i've listened to quite a few albums now that you come to expect from matt Barringer. Mm. that that's his name yes yeah matt Barringer. yeah, yeah. Um, so I was, I was like in a banging mood to listen to High Violet. And that's, that's when you kind of like said to me, you're just like, yeah, don't expect the same thing. And I was like, fuck. Well, I mean, yeah, like keep in mind, there was like <laughs> five years between the two albums and there was Boxer in between. Yeah. So there was yeah, a lot yeah. of so, gross. Nebulation. So I, I skipped Boxer initially because like High Violet was the album that you, you said for me to listen to. So mm. I was just like, okay, maybe I'll come back to Boxer if I, I really enjoy High Violet. High Violet has been one of the most confusing and frustrating albums I've listened to of recently. And okay. and I say that in in the nicest way possible because the first time I listened to it, I was like, oh no, this is this is exactly th- this is my suspicions confirmed about the national. I was like, it's it's the the slow songs, the the sort of like drab vocals. I was like, everything that I loved about Alligator was almost gone like the the, mm. the guitar playing was totally different they they like swapped out this sort of noodly guitar playing for like very sort of shoegazy reverb heavy sort of like tremolo guitars yeah and uh and i was just like oh no like and then like to- especially towards the back end you've got all like these very very slow ballads and i was like fuck but obviously like we had we had a two two album minimum listen yeah, and so I gave it a second listen, and I was like, "Okay, this is slightly grown on me, but I'm I'm still just not I'm not feeling it. I'm really just not like I ca- I can't click with it. Like it's starting to get there. Like terrible love was sort of slightly growing on me, just like because I liked that build up, like from how it yeah. starts to that sort of crashing end. Um, I I thought was like it's just getting there. And then third listen, I was like, okay, a little bit more, but I'm still not feeling it. And it took about seven listens for it to finally just like click seven. and about seven. And that's why it's yeah. been so frustrating is because I knew that there was something good there. I knew that there was something great within this album. Hmm. And uh, I was just waiting for it to happen. I was just like, I've got to keep listening. And I, I've never done that like with an album. Usually, like it's like after two listens. If I if I'm done with it, I'm done with it. But there was right. something about this album that, with each listen, kept bringing me back. And weirdly enough, it was those slower tracks, like um, yeah, sorrow and oh, sorrow, uh, so good. It's I know, so fucking good. And and especially like probably like one of my favorite songs I've listened to of recent is the final track, uh, which is uh, Vandalile Crybaby Geeks. Oh, yeah. is oh so my beautiful like i li- literally like i i learned it on guitar like i just like have you I, yeah, yeah yeah i mean like oh, the wow. chords the chords are really fucking easy to be honest but that that that's kind of the, the genius of it though is that like it's really mm. really basic chords but it's oh man it's just so I, I don't i don't even know how to yeah sort of explain why i love it i like i watched like a live version where matt berenger didn't say a single word and just the entire audience sings every single lyric and i swear to god it like almost brought me to fucking tears like it was there's just something about it i love uh runaway like that that refrain um the the go ahead go ahead refrain um those lyrics are just so great i still think it kind of sags in the middle I think there's a point. Yeah, it's a very saggy middle. I will. It, admit yeah, that. It, it's just uh, the 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 middle point of the album. Like, um, I'm just gonna look at the track list. It, it it's around about the fourth or fifth track that it just sort of slowly becomes that sort of what I was feeling. Like, I'm I'm not like huge on Blood Buzz Ohio or Lemon World, but from yeah. Runaway onwards, yeah. it's so great and. Mm. Um, and oh, tracks like Anyone's Ghost as well is, is oh, wonderful. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think it's Afraid of Everyone hmm. has, or, or it's, oh God, see, we, we said to each other to make notes and I, I swear to God I was good on this. There's, um, I'm pretty sure it's, it's, it's Afraid of Everyone, hmm. but there's a really, really nice guitar bit and I just think the ending goes on for too long. Ah, oh, but I, I think that's like the best 
song in the album, actually. Yeah, what, I just it's, love it's the Sufian's way Sufian's backing like, vocals. Yeah, the the backing vocals yeah. and like that guitar bit. You're on about like dun, 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 like that. Yeah, weird, yeah, yeah. It's just I absolutely that love guitar. that. It, it's literally just like as soon as uh, Behringer's vocals stop, and it just goes into that sort of like drum and guitar passage where where it it just sort of peters out. I think I think it should have stopped mm. like where the vocals stopped. Personally, but, I, I don't know. I would have thought that'd be too abrupt. Honestly, I, I just love the uh, just how dirgy he gets towards the end, especially. I know you keep saying uh, to, the, to the lead up of this episode that uh, Matt's vocals were very monotone mm-hmm. and very low and kind of bland, but I think yeah. there are moments on High Vida, and especially on Afraid of Everyone, mm-hmm. where there are moments where you can feel the emotion and you can feel oh one hundred percent reaching up to his pitch, you know, mm-hmm. and like towards the end, it's like your voice is swallowing, like it just goes mm-hmm. mad. Oh, oh my god! Yeah, yeah, like yeah! That, I down. fucking love that, and I, I think yeah. it's um, uh, like on, I want to say it's conversation sixteen, um, mm. the the bit where where you start saying I'm evil, um, yeah. Oh god, it's fucking yeah! Like Chill. that, that is what I love. That's uh, yeah. like the the lyric. Like I mean, for me, like the three albums that I listened to by the National, like the lyrics confuse me in, in in a very very strange way because like what I like about it is that it's very poetic and mm. sort of demands to be looked further into. So, like, everything's kind of, like, metaphorical or everything's kind of... Just, yeah, it's poetic. It's very flowery. So you could look at those yeah. lyrics and go, I wonder what the fuck these mean. But it's also it's also kind of, like, to the point enough where you go, yeah, this is obviously about him and his wife or this is obviously about him and his girlfriend, like... I swear to God, has he ever had a happy memory with this woman? Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, all um, of these songs is just, it's just uh, so <laughs> funny to listen to because it's just like, holy shit, dude! Like, because what Sleep Well Beast is like kind of about him on the edge of a divorce, and it's all like co-written by his wife as well. Yeah, like um, um, uh, in yeah, Alli- like Alligator, was... like yeah, Alli- Alligator. Yeah, Alligator's like kind of like uh, yeah, yeah. Like there, there are loving songs towards her, like um. Mm. But then, like, I don't know, like, you get some of his personality through it, through his lyrics, and you're just like, I'm, I'm very confused here, man. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, like, like, I, I, I love on... the lyrics, but, like, it's very confusing as to what his position is with this marriage. I know, uh, but, like, I, I know there's a, a a lyric on Alligator. I think mm-hmm. it's a song, All the Wine. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I'm in a circle of black girls. And the first time I heard that. Yes. Oh, my like, God. Right. I, I, I. <laughs> Yes, because I I, I, I I God is on my alligator. side. I I listened to Alligator uh, yesterday as I was falling asleep. It was I just decided mm. to like put it on like whilst I was sleeping, and uh, you know like how you just like don't really pay attention to music like when you're sort of in that state. I yeah. was just sort of just laying there, and then that line came up, and I was like, "Hang on, hold up a second. What the fuck did he just say?" <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> it was so fucking bizarre. I, I but like. It just, oh, this is strange. But yeah, Alligator is, uh, I, I think Alligator is fucking phenomenal. Um, and so I don't think High Violet is as good because I think track by track, like if I'm if I'm measuring them up, like I, I just think I think Alligator is the stronger album. I think the songs are just mm. they're punchy when they need to be, but they're also they've got that like sort of sorrow laced instruments and everything like that. But I, I yeah. think Alligator is the uh, the the better album, or at least it's like my personal favorite between the two. Right. Um, and then I'm just gonna briefly talk about Boxer and how horrendously overrated it is. <gasps> oh, you're gonna piss some people off for that. I'm really Ooh. gonna piss people off here because, like, so here here I am, like thinking, hey, you know what? Like, I've listened to Alligator now. I really liked it. High Violet. I I really liked it. Uh, it took me a while to get into it, but I really liked it. I, everyone, everyone raves about Boxer. Like, yeah. oh, it's their best album. It's it's easily. And I like... agree. It's not their best album by any means, but it's a <sighs> damn good album. Uh, I I I found it even more frustrating than High Violet. Like to me, Ooh, really? they they had got they had gotten rid of the the sort of plucky mathy guitars from Alligator, but they haven't quite worked up to that sort of reverby shoegazy stuff they're doing on High Violet. And so yeah. it kind of just felt like really boring piano rock. Oh. Th- Excuse me, I've heard some boring piano rock, and the Nationals Boxer is not some boring piano rock. I'm not Excuse saying it's me. necessarily like a boring album. Like there are good tracks on it, and like I, like, I think "Mistaken for Strangers" is a really fucking good song. Ah, oh, so good. But yeah. um, 
it was just that like out of like even like my first listen to high violet like as much as i was like i don't know whether i love this or not or i don't know whether i like this or not there was still something that wanted me to return like my first listen to boxer there was none of that like Mm. it was the same with alligator when i first listened to alligator like i wasn't blown away by it but there was something about it that made me want to return same with high violet as soon the first listen i had to boxer i was just like i I don't want to return to this (laughs) like i just don't want to return to it and and i I know you're really into post-punk and it's their most post-punky album see i don't see that I don't really? see that. No, I really oh, don't. Really? Like Mistaken Strangers is like post punk. Like, oh yeah, that is. To a T. I just don't see it with a a, a lot of the the rest of the album. Um, oh, I, I've got one more comment about High Violet, and then and then I'll move on. Oh shoot. Um, so one of my other few problems is is that like obviously the Nationals quite a a big band. Like they've got fucking mm, very horn big. sections. They've got. Um, string sections like they, they, it's not just piano like guitars bass and drums like it's mm. quite a full sounding band and right. i think on alligator like that it, it's like perfected like the use of the strings and the use of the horns are like both subtle and grand where they need to be i think on high violet sometimes it's it's overkill there there are certain songs that make it sound like i'm listening to a james bond soundtrack where the horns are just so <laughs> so blaring <laughs> what like, does that mean so the the horns are just so like loud and like in your face that it's like oh my god it's like could you get more fucking grand than this like, <laughs> but that is the most like white person com- complaint i've ever heard <laughs> <laughs> you're too grand turn it down no it's not it's not about well yeah it is that but um i don't know <laughs> I, ju- I just think it was some like there are places where it, like the horn sections really really work in high violet and same with the strings mm. and then there are other places where it's just like yeah let's just let's just full throttle on those horns boys like let's let's go for it and it, it's just like oh my god i mean can you pinpoint any songs that overdo the orchestration um, let's see if i've written any down because I, I can't remember <laughs> uh it's like from my memory I want to um, say England, but I, I can't remember, to be honest. I mean, uh, I, I don't know. I think, me personally, this may be nostalgia talking, I think that's the yeah. point of this episode. Um, mm-hmm. I believe the orchestration works really, really well with mm-hmm. the rest of the music. And now, I think there is a good balance between the guitars, the bass, and the drums, like the actual instrumentation mm-hmm. with the added strings, the added... Um, trumpets, the horns, yeah, and all of that. Um, I think there's a good balance between those, especially on those slower songs where it really brings out that melancholy and that sadness. That that's that's um, what I mean. A uh, hey, um, that's what I mean though. Like it works in some places, and then there's the bits where like it's doing. It's like we're gonna start slow and then end on a climax, and it's during the climax where the horns are just like, bwah, bwah, and you're just like, oh shit. Here they Is come. Hans Zimmer. <laughs> no, no, it's not. It's not. It's not like that bad. But no. Still, that that that's that's my only other thing I had to say about it. But yeah, you've uh, okay. you've successfully turned me onto the national, and hey. uh, for sure, I'm I'm gonna probably check out uh, sad songs for Dirty Lovers and Sleep Well mm. Beast. I'm not sure if I can be bothered with Trouble May Find Us. But... Yeah. Well, I'm like, okay. Well, sad songs for Dirty Lovers is legitimately underrated it's Mm -hmm. the most underrated national album in my opinion it's Mm -hmm. it's very if if you quite like the uh the raw instrumentation of alligator you're gonna love Mm -hmm. the instrumentation on sad songs and there's one song on that album which you know matt's vocals get so loud and so abrasive that you're like what the fuck is this the same person Mm -hmm. like it's really enthralling it's really invigorating but yeah trouble will find me is uh it's it's a uh, it's a troublesome album if you excuse the pun yeah um because it's taking that sound of high violet further but if you had problems with high violet i don't think you're going to like trouble find me that much yeah it seems even more stripped back from like the lead single that i listened to it's way it, so. stripped back yeah um yeah, I'm, and I'm not it's sure that's my thing it's very melancholy to the point of just like um 
pu- yeah, just like pure yeah. meh. Like ugh. that's the thing. I really like some songs on there, and I mm-hmm. loved it as a teenager when it first came out. Mm-hmm. But yeah, with repeated listens, it does drag an that's awful fun. lot. Um, cool. And yeah, Matt's vocals are more droney than ever mm-hmm. on that album, unfortunately. Um, but people so yeah, I'd, I'd still say listen to it once. Just so you know. And it, just so if you I find the time and it. the motivation, I will. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Sea Bell Beast is fantastic. Do definitely re-listen to that. Yeah, I might, I might have to. Might have to. Well, right. Should. Right. On to me with yeah. Smashing Pumpkins, Melancholy, and the Infinite Sadness. Now, my relationship with Smashing Pumpkins is yeah. I've never listened to a Smashing Pumpkins album before this. This is my first one. Yeah. Um, and all I know about the band was their grunge. And I really, yeah, that's it. I just, grunge has this aura around it. Yeah. It's not the best. No, I, aura I agree. Either. I agree. Yeah. yeah. You just think Nirvana, never mind. You think all these like edgy teenagers. Pearl with, Jam. Yeah. Like flannel shirts. Pirates. Pearl yeah. Jam. You think of all these like images in your head and you think, ugh, nah, mm-hmm. that's not for me. Um, and so that's what I was expecting with this album mm-hmm. because um, I, I don't know how big Smashing Pumpkins were in the nineties, but I knew they were quite Huge. big. Yeah, yeah, they were quite big. I don't know if they were as big as Nirvana. They they got they got cucked by Nirvana. There, there's a whole story about cucked. it. They got they got absolutely cucked by Nirvana because when okay. uh, Siamese Dream came out, I think two weeks before Nevermind, and Siamese Dream oh, was shit. produced. It was produced by Butch Vig, who also pro- uh, produced Nevermind. Oh, so oh. that's that's okay. how it got lumped in with the uh, grunge genre. All oh, right. I, well, yeah, they got uh, today's music fact brought yeah. to you by Talking Music Podcast. Yeah. <laughs> wow, I didn't know that. Okay. Um, so yeah, this is my first Smashing Pumpkins album, and it's mm-hmm. two hours long, and I was expecting two hours of grunge, so I wasn't looking forward to it. The same no, that's, that's yeah, that's not. Having said that, when the first song comes up, mm-hmm. and I hear piano. Mm-hmm. And then I hear violin, and then I hear other strings and other horns. I'm like, what the fuck? Am I playing the right album? I'm mm-hmm. not listening to like Billy Joel or Father John Misty. Like this is Smashing <laughs> Pumpkins, right? And I was kind of taken aback, you know. And then it goes mm-hmm. on to the second track. Oh um, boy, yeah. Uh, Tonight, tonight, mm-hmm. and it carries on mm-hmm. the orchestral sound of it with a bit more bit more of a band feel you know yeah. it's got guitars got a bit drums a bit more oomph uh and like really slick guitar riff as well like dun 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 mm-hmm. dun like kind of like noodly guitars it's like ah, okay this actually might be a decent album this might be worth it um, yeah i can feel a and, big butt well, coming in <laughs> here's the thing like when i very first listened to it mm-hmm. uh billy corgan's vocals were a bit of a turn off at first yeah yeah, it's just that like kind of like Waluigi, <laughs> yeah. you know? I'm just imagining <laughs> Waluigi singing along to these songs. It's like, Waluigi, wee. tonight. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. at first it was a bit of a turn off, but the more I listened to it, it actually grew on me. It just, mm. I got used to it. Um, and then when the grungier songs came up in the track list, mm. it fitted it better. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I just don't know if the vocals fit the orchestration of the first two songs. Yeah. Um, but as soon as I got to Jelly Belly, mm-hmm. this was okay. This is what I expected, right? Mm-hmm. It's grunge, it's dirty, it's dirty, um, and that uh, vocal line was like, "No, where?" Like, mm-hmm. reminded me of Nirvana. It reminded me of Ah, oh, no. Yeah. Um. So it that song is what I was expecting. Yeah. Um. But then. Right, so I'm already impressed with the first two tracks, kind mm-hmm. of meh on Jelly Belly. Mm-hmm. Then it gets to zero. Oh boy! And and I'm like, fuck yeah, this is it. This is fucking it. It's like da na na. Great fucking that that riff. fucking riff, man. Like the with that fucking so slide down the fucking string as well is so mm. good. It's so mm-hmm. good, and like that solo near the middle. Mm-hmm. Oh, so fucking. Billy fuzzy. Corgan's a really underrated guitar player. Like really, yeah, really I'd underrated. Say so. Yeah, mm-hmm. and like. Uh, I was doing some research actually, and just like uh, on the history of the album, and just like other people doing covers of mm-hmm. the song as well, and like no one can get that guitar to sound like it. Does I, I've the tried; album. it's difficult. Like, yeah, it's and really just, difficult. Like, how does that? 
how did they get that sound mm-hmm. in 1995? Mm-hmm. You know, and that's the thing. Like the album production is so crisp, it's mm-hmm. so clean, and like it, the production made me come. The first time oh I yeah, yeah, it. yeah. Like it's so nicely produced. Um, so I I remember like it, this was like kind of the album that like made me realize how important mixing was. I remember yeah. I was about fifteen, like, and and I was I was like listening to it through headphones, and I remember when uh, "Fuck You" and "Ode to No One" comes on. And oh, yeah. the drums in that fucking song just like blister through everything, and like mm-hmm. the guitars are so fucking like in line. I was literally just like out on a dog walk, and I just remember just like sort of like this awakening of just like, holy shit, this is how a song should be fucking produced. Like, yeah, man, yeah, it's so well produced. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the thing, like, um. I wasn't really expecting anything else out of this album. I was just expecting mm-hmm. grunge, but to get really lavish production and really slick riffs as mm-hmm. well, I, I was quite impressed at this point. Um, the only thing that threw me off with um, Zero uh, was uh, that like vocal breakdown with the uh, emptiness, it's cleanliness. Me... Yeah, me... yeah, <laughs> great yeah. bit. Yeah. Uh, God but... is empty, just like me. Yeah, that line is yeah. uh, is something. Um, and I was thinking, like, God, like, all I can imagine is like Billy Corgan with like his long hair in his face, and he's just like staring in the mirror. I was like, Oh yeah, I'm so edgy, mate. He's like uh. bald as fuck. Like, <laughs> uh, did he have hair back then though? Uh, he did like during Gish and Siamese Dream, but I'm pretty sure around like this album was when he like completely shaved everything off. Okay. Well, yeah. that's the thing. I'm imagining him still having the long hair. Yeah, 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 yeah. That line is so fucking edgy. Mm-hmm. It's so edgy, especially the way he delivers it. It's like so mm-hmm. dirty and slurred. Yeah. You know, um, it's as if he's he's gonna like sexually touch me or something as he's saying. Oh my that. god! It's so dirty. But the yeah. thing is, with that line, it it is kind of edgy and it is kind of cringy in its edginess, but mm-hmm. it's kind of charming. Yeah, 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 because of its delivery, like I think it knows it's being edgy. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, like. for, for sure. Yeah, like... absolutely. So yeah, from there, uh, we go into here is no why. Is that mm-hmm. is that the right name? Yeah, yeah, that's the next no... yeah. Um, I'm probably gonna get a lot of shit for this for mm-hmm. saying this. Mm-hmm. Not that it's like a beloved song or anything like that, but I think yeah. the comparison I'm gonna make is gonna get a bit of a shit. Okay. This song feels like a leftover yeah. from Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust if it was Ooh. made in the 1990s. That's if Ziggy Stardust, I, if, I mean, yeah, if Ziggy Stardust was made in the grunge era, this yeah. would be a B-side from that album. Fair. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to I'm not going to disagree with that. Yeah, it's just like the anthemic like clam rock guitars. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. And like the kind of swaggeristic vocals that Billy Corgan's doing, it reminded so, me very much of Bowie. Do Do you know much about the reception behind this album? All I know is that it's well loved among uh, fans of the band as well as online publications. I know it was like number one album yeah. of 1995 by some was publications. It? Oh, shit. Yeah, see, I, di- I didn't know that. All All, all I kind of know about it is that like m- more people prefer Siamese Dream because it's. It's like much more concise. Like Siamese Dream is only an hour, like twelve or thirteen tracks yeah, or something. Yeah, and I'm gonna be talking about that as well because the yeah. thing with the, my absolute biggest problem with this album Length. is it's so inconsistent. I it's uh, that, beyond inconsistent. As as much as I adore this album to pieces, I agree. Like yeah, you, you, I I think it's fair to criticize some of your favorite albums, and, oh, and definitely. I definitely yeah. I think that is one of my biggest problems with it. Even through mm. re-listens, like I was like, yeah, there's there's stuff in here that's yeah. It's just I don't know. It's the way, um, especially the first disc. I think the second disc is a lot more consistent. But Do you? Still... I'm literally the really? opposite. Are you actually? No. Yeah, I I love the first disc. Like, I, I think the first disc is fucking great. And then for mm. me, it's like uh, the second disc. I th- I think is great as well. But like towards the end of the second disc, I think it sort of start, starts to be like, okay, right, Billy, you don't have to do another fourteen tracks. You know, like y- you can, ah, like, you can stop. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny because I am exactly the opposite. That's, I mean, I love weird. the first disc too. I really mm. like the first disc because mm. of those grungy songs. Mm-hmm. 
But the problem with it is uh, from Cupid the Lock onwards, mm-hmm. it just drags. It really oh, mate. fucking drags. So, yeah, because, like, um, what about what about Poor Selena? Like, the, the big well, nine yeah, this, minute track. This is what I'm going to say. So, it yeah. gets to Galapagos, which mm-hmm. is like this very slow ballad. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, this is a good closer. Mm-hmm. But then I see there's three more songs on this one disc. <laughs> oh. <laughs> This isn't the closer. Shit. Um, and then you get Muzzle, which is a very generic grunge song. Yeah, really Muzzle's fine. Me. Like... Yeah, Muzzle's okay. Uh, Poor Selena, great song. Mm-hmm. And it is a great... It would have been a great closer. Mm-hmm. But then you get Take Me Down, which is like the third ending to the album or to the, the disc. It's like, it's like the return of the king of albums. Yeah, I was thinking but... that. <laughs> it just carries on and on and on and on. It's like three different endings. Yeah. You know, it, like for me, it should have been uh, Poor Selena should have been the ending, mm-hmm. and then you get rid of Take Me Down, Galapagos, possibly get rid of Cupid the Lock, mm-hmm. you know, and then just end it with Poor Selena, and yeah. then make a, a second album that's not related to Melancholy with the second disc because mm-hmm. the second disc is completely different. Yeah, they, they, think they have two different names. Like, I can't remember. I think mm. one's called like Dusk Till dawn or some shit and then the other one's called like tea time to something like tea time they're, 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 they're meant to represent like day and night kind of thing i i, I believe okay. yeah all right um i mean that's the thing i i can very clearly see disc two is the album billy corgan wanted to make mm-hmm. but he knew at least this is the the sense i get i think he knew yeah. that fans would not take to it lightly because there's no grungy dirty music oh yeah it. like not Sim- Siamese not Siamese enough. dream is is fucking like heavy like they would layer mm. like 12 guitars on top of each other no shit like, I, there, I, I need to check it out honestly. dude it's it's really really worth it but yeah okay. no the all the all the sort of like heavier stuff is very much more in the vein of like Siamese dream okay right um uh, yeah so that's the thing like there's so many slow songs on the second half and even some peppered out throughout the first disc that I just think like this could have been one album, all these mm-hmm. slow songs. You didn't really need these grungy songs on there. Sure. Because the slow songs feel so much more passionate. Mm-hmm. Uh, the grungy songs are still great. Um they just don't I just don't think these two worlds collide sure. all too well. You know? And you mm-hmm. could argue that, oh, but it's two discs and he separates it fine. It's kinda of like a house of love, <laughs> but, but they both low, the, low kind of thing. Both the discs are a mess. <laughs> So it's, it, it's just... basically yeah, they, they, it's, there's two discs, but they don't. He doesn't separate those two worlds. Both of the discs are yeah. like a mess. Like yeah, uh, that's the thing. <laughs> um, the first disc is a mess. There's just grungy songs or slow songs, and it's just all over the place. Mm-hmm. The second disc, uh, you have slow song after slow song after slow song, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden you get tales of a scorched earth, which is distorted mm-hmm. as fuck. And mm-hmm. honestly, it sounds awful. Like I really do not like the production on it. Fair. It just sounds horrid, you know. Especially when it follows uh, "In the Arms of Sleep," nineteen seventy nine, and especially yeah. 1979, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, to finish with nineteen seventy nine, and then go on to like <laughs> like "Tales of the Scorched Earth," mm-hmm. shit like that. It's uh, it just ruins the flow. Oh, but then, then, but then on that side, you've got like X Y U, and X Y U is fantastic. so good. XYU is so good. Yeah. But it just if that's what makes it more frustrating, it's like you have these great songs. Yeah. Um that just don't mesh. You know? <laughs> because XYU sounds doomy. It sounds like yeah. Black Sabbath inspired, actually. Yeah, like th- th- this is this is Billy Corgan's thing, is that he loves writing love songs and he was heavily inspired by Black Sabbath. Oh, is it? Okay, that explains yeah. a lot then. Yeah. Okay. You see, I could sense like there's some Black Sabbath worship, and I could possibly see like where Electric Wizard might pull some ideas from. Like they might mm-hmm. look towards this song. Um, but yeah, to X Y U follows Stumbling, and then you get We Only Come Out at Night. It just the flow see, doesn't I'm, work. I, I, it, it, those uh, those last three tracks on that side, like. Hmm. I love farewell and good night because what I loved about like yeah. both both ends of the discs is that he had the rest of the band singing on them, like it wasn't ah, just yeah. Corgan's voice. So, 
you know, he uh, he's got like James Iron there. He's got uh, Darcy singing as well, and and like it, the, both ends of the albums. So both both of them are bookended with all three of them singing at yeah. some point. And I, I think those are those are good. But then like after we only come out at night, like Beautiful Lily, My One and Only, and by Starlight, I'm, I'm I kind of like at that point, it's just like fuck me like i've been sat here for an hour and 45 like, yeah, <laughs> as much as i love as much as i adore this album like it's at that point i am just like i, I want to get to farewell and good night because i think it's such a good a uh, good ending hmm. i mean honestly, yeah i think by starlight is also really fucking good like, mm. just that guitar line like, like just way that like sails over mm-hmm. the song it kind of reminds me of like what dream pop bands are doing nowadays yeah yeah, yeah. yeah especially like beach house for instance yeah um but yeah like you said once you get to that point you just kind of feel fatigued you know it's just like oh it's the same shit throughout it's, it, you know it's why when, when, I, when i tend to listen to it now like um i i tend to have like days where i want to listen to the first disc and then days where i want to listen to the second disc or like certain mm. songs will get into my head like i don't know say like the other day i was just like bodies came into my head and i was like oh my god i want to listen to that song but th- there yeah. is there is one vocal refrain in bodies that pisses me off so much and and that's oh, yeah. um billy corgan not understanding that the word suicide is uh has has an i in it and not an a yeah um, <laughs> So he's like screaming, "Love is suicide," and it's like, "Billy, mate, that's wrong." Like, <laughs> stop. Oh, but it's cool, you know. Like, <laughs> darkness consumes him. He doesn't care how he spells suicide. He he's in love with his sadness. If, if we're is. going back to um, zero. Oh, well, see, that's the thing. I said zero was edgy and mm. charming as edginess, but um. That line in bodies mm-hmm. is the bad kind of edginess. You yeah, know? see, I think it's just the way he delivers the edginess. Yeah, it's one of my favorite Pumpkin songs because I, I just love that guitar line through it. I absolutely love it. Yeah, I, t- I don't know. Yeah, it's for me, it's just a little bit frustrating. Um, would I, Would you, yeah. after having listened to it as many times as you have, and and the two hours, would you still refer to this as grunge? I don't. I I'd, I'd say it transcends grunge enough. For me, Thank not you. to say it's a fully grunge album. There are grunge elements, definitely. Sure. But it's definitely not a grunge album, through and through. So um, glad you said that. <laughs> yeah, because that's the thing. I, I would even say, like, parts of it are slowcore, you know? Yeah. Or, yeah, like, yeah. sad boy rock. Mm-hmm. But very few... If we especially take it song by song, over mm-hmm. half is ballads. Mm-hmm. And then you have, I'd say, about 10 or 11 songs that are grungy. So, yeah, I definitely wouldn't say it's a grunge album, but I, I don't know what I would class it as. It's kind of a mishmash of yeah. different things, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Alternative rock, maybe? <laughs> I don't want to sound uh, like... Or, all right, Apple Music. Like, yeah. I'd say. <laughs> anything that's slightly different, it's like, this is alternative. Yeah. Oh, this guitar's a little bit distorted, so it's alternative. <laughs> There's more than alternative as genres. <laughs> Yeah, you have indie, indie rock, indie alternative, indie alternative, alternative indie. You know, like... two completely different genres. <laughs> oh, definitely, definitely. <laughs> I, so I'm just, I'm, just I'm, I'm glad you just you finally listened to the album because I, I, I actually remember. I think, like Sleep Well Beast was about a year ago. I think about a year ago, uh, maybe more than a year ago. I remember we were sat in the living room, um, hmm. and I remember I tried. I tried to get you to listen to this album and I remember putting on Fuck You and Ode to No One and I remember you saying like this just sounds like a generic grunge band like and I, I was just yeah. like no well, no because like, like some of the grunge songs do sound generic not all of them but some no. of them yeah no like the thing is is that like because uh, I, I listened to it again um, after you know, after you had listened to it, just just to sort of try and be as as non biased in my approach to listening to it as possible. Hmm. And yeah, I do see that. It's it it, do, it doesn't stop it from being one of my 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 favorite albums of all time. But like, it it was just one of those things where I was listening to certain bits, going like, yeah, this is pretty edgy. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and also, can I say, in regards to High Violet, mm. um, when I was re-listening to it, um. All I could think about was, was your reaction to it. Yeah. And there were certain parts in that album where Matt does get very, very droney. 
and almost to the point where it becomes a fault of the yeah. album you know like to the point where he sounds like he's mumbling um, this, is, this is the problem when you know someone's musical tastes like inside and out you're just like oh my god they're gonna hate this or oh my yeah. god they're gonna love this like, <laughs> i think it's just like a general anxiety of sharing yeah. music with your friends yeah you know? i know so like, wait know. to the good bit wait to the good bit like, it's coming up it's coming up literally and i saw a meme about that the other day and i was like it's so yeah. fucking true it's, whenever it's so you're true. trying to introduce music to someone and you're like oh yeah this bit like this bit fucking slaps and they're just like yeah it's good and you're like yeah no, no reaction no <laughs> have a better reaction please <laughs> have a better reaction. we're gonna do this again i'm gonna replay it you react this time yeah 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 and it's just that golden moment when someone's like oh my god this is fucking so good and you're like yeah mm. yeah <laughs> i've succeeded that's the only thing yeah, that always makes it. That yeah. always makes it. Yeah. So, um, so I, I, I guess done. that that sort of rounds up our, our thoughts. Yeah. Yes. Anything else you wanted to say? Not really. So I think we should get into recommendations for the next. Oh episode. boy, for next week, next episode. So yeah, this is going to be a continuing series where mm-hmm. we each recommend an album, we each listen to it, and then we each react to our thoughts on those albums on air. So we're, uh, gonna, we're gonna attempt to have like a few different themes here and there, but I think for next week we're just kinda going with just a recommendation of what we haven't listened to, yeah? Yeah, we're figuring it out along with you guys, honestly. Yeah. Like this is all new to us as well. So we're just gonna figure it out. But yeah, do you wanna recommend your album first and then I recommend mine? Okay, so th- this is uh th- this was pretty quick thinking because I only just remembered today when you reminded me that we got to re- we got to do this um because i'm on so shit. i i was sort of looking through albums that i've listened to recently that i know that you haven't listened to that i i absolutely love hmm. um okay so we, we, we're gonna have gone from a two hour long album that's grunge uh to I, I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna recommend uh cara cara benito's uh benito generation no because ah. it's it's so no. good and it's so why overtly sugary and so oh. poppy and i genuinely have no idea what your reaction is going to be oh, minimum of two listens know. by the way it's like it's like a Three. 30 minute album it's like a 30 minute album and it's oh. it's so it's so overtly poppy it's amazing right the only song i've listened to it i've listened yeah. to from the album is that shrimp song that's, the that's only not song on the I've album that's not on the album that's oh, like from an ep no no Oh, okay, well, that gives me a little bit of hope. Yeah, so you you got you got nothing that like no right. surprises here and there. You've just got some <sighs> crazy weird production. It's shit. It, it's it's like a it's like a really really bright sounding Death Grips. Yeah, I see all these comparisons with Death Grips. They're not wrong. <laughs> They're not wrong. Like, don't <laughs> feed don't feed the beast. The <sighs> I I just I'm gonna have to hold off from saying anything else because I'm so excited for you to listen to this. Oh, dear me. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm kind of glad I picked my album suggestion based on your suggestion because oh, okay, dear me, I'm not looking forward to that. I just oh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna think. It's great. Um. So yeah, I felt bad about my album suggestion, but now mm. I feel okay about it. Oh. Do you want to know what album you're gonna be listening to oh, next no. week? Okay. I got like the biggest dumbest smile on my face right now. Just, just, <laughs> I'm ready. All right, brace yourself. I'm gonna announce it through a song. Oh no! What's a Guan? Shang Kingston. Jr. No. Mandim. May we go take the slums where killers get hung. Shawty, I can take hey, you yeah. there. Please, please stop. You're listening to Sean oh. Kingston's debut album. How long is with it? With Beautiful Girls, Take How You There, How among other hits. How long is it? <laughs> please um, send me a noose. Okay, I'll tell you what. Uh, I don't know how long the album is. I think it's 15 minutes. From what I remember, there's definitely 17 tracks or 16 tracks. Oh <laughs> my god, you're killing me, <laughs> man. But it flies by. It flies by. <sighs> Does it? Yeah. I mean, 13 year old me thinks so. Have you listened to it since? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm planning to re listen to it when you listen to it. So I'm prepared. 
to talk about the album, but yeah, I haven't listened to it since 2012. It's been a long time. So yeah. <laughs> oh my god. I'll be listening to the so Kerico Benio. Benio uh, generation. You are so lucky. Am you I? So... Yes. Am I actually? You have, you have no idea how lucky you are right now. Mate, you're going to be listening to Sean Kingston. I think you're the lucky yeah, one. Yeah, and you're going to be listening to Cara Cara Benito. I know, I know that makes me sound like a mega cuck boy right now, but like... <laughs> See, like, look, so, I'm down the, with the kids. The, the soy boy that I am. I want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> fuck. I've man. made the proper recommendation. I've made the I have too. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. That, that's the point of this podcast. We're going to see how these recommendations... Yeah, I'll I, I, I tell you what, that is a fucking very, very interesting next episode. Oh, definitely. Because, like, we're both not looking forward to it. So, at least we're, like, kind of intrigued. I don't know, I don't know which one of us is more disappointed. <laughs> I, honestly, I think it's you. Because, like, at least I know people like Kero Kero Benio. I don't you, know you many people. no like idea him. with Sean Kingston. <laughs> no. He, I mean, he's... <laughs> he has his fans. That's the thing. How many it's of not them? not the like, same. Three? I don't know. Maybe... Yeah, maybe maybe six. You know he what a, though? You know what? I've though. I've eaten my hat a lot of times this year, like with Mate, artists I that I had previously shat on and then been like, Hey, you know what? This was really great. So you know what? I'm if I'm taking back, to this. If, if I if I come back, back and love, love this. Yeah, if you love it. Order the vinyl and so like all sorts. If it's on vinyl, it's been, it was like ten years ago it came out. More than ten years ago actually, now I think about it. Oh, this is gonna be interesting. I'll literally just stare it out my window, just it's like, just... mate, I, I've got to listen to Sean Kingston. What is my life? The worst part is that most of the music I listen to is on the way to work. So that means, like, I've got to sit on a train and, and listen to Sean Kingston. <laughs> just bust out uh, your tracksuit, bust out your snapback, and your. Uh, I don't think you understand big, what this generation generally. listens to, Josh. <laughs> they listen to the classics. They listen to Sean Grime. Sean Kingston is classic. Sean Kingston is proto, um, you know, like this new like dancehall reggae wave that's happening in pop music right now. Sean yes. Kingston was there first; he got there first. What about the, I'm, I'm he's a pioneer? Sean sure. Sean Paul was probably first, but um... it was along the same time. Guys named Sean basically pioneered that sound. Yeah, yeah. Sean Paul and Sean Kingston. <laughs> Sean Kingston is the better one because he actually has taste. As opposed yeah. to just going Shanabal all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, I'm dreading this now. Um, <laughs> so I'm looking forward do, to it. Do it's do join great. us uh, next time for for a discussion on Sean Kingston's first album and Cara Cara Benito's Benito Generation. Whenever it comes out, we don't know. We'll we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll like hopefully soon. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely, definitely. Unless you don't right. kill yourself before then. Uh, You're not getting out of this. You send me that news. <laughs> um, <laughs> Only after you listen to the album. I'll send okay. you the news. That'll be your reward. Them, uh, them, them, them beautiful girls, they got me, they got me suicidal, man. Suicidal, suicidal in the stage. Over and all the beautiful girls. I think this is where we should end it. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> All right, Thank you wonderful. for tuning in. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time on the Talking Music Podcast. In a bit.